Beloved, welcome back. So Gen X is going to be the last generation that knows what it's like to live without the internet. That's my generation. I was born in 1969. I share the same or close birthday to Kurt Cobain, right smack dab in the center. I had access to my grandfather who rode a horse to school. Both my grandfathers rode horses to school in the first grade. So I was raised by that man and I heard the stories of living without electricity. I heard the stories, you know, secondhand of, of uh, the Great Depression, uh, living in tents, being so poor that people had to eat sparrow sandwiches. I heard all those stories and lived with it. And also was you know, a teenager at the time when computers came in. I saw the very first computers, the first cell phones, the first, I remember my childhood was, I didn't realize how good it was at the time. If I knew then what I know now, I would have enjoyed it more because it was a, an amazing special time. But there was no cell phones, no pagers, no internet, and no parental oversight. I was thinking the question comes up in the comments, why are you building this cabin? And I asked myself, you know, I've got several different reasons, but really when it comes down to it, if you were to ask me that in person, I would tell you, I'm building this cabin for my kids it's because communal living is going to be the future. I, I'm, I don't think this is a trend, beloved. I think that many of you that are watching and hearing my words right now are not going to be able to own your own home. You're not going to be able to achieve that because it's just going to be made impossible or just too difficult. Not everyone's going to be able to play. It seems that the middle class will cease to exist, that this was a very rare thing in the history, in the scheme of time that has never taken place before. I remember back even when in my childhood, the family, my family lived together. Grandparents, uh, kids, everyone was in, if not in the same home, we're going to fly here, they were on the same property in a bit of a compound. And how it worked was the family supported itself. When you got too old to go out and to physically bring in resources or work or have a job, you were not put into out to pasture. You were given a different role. Now you're at the home. Now maybe you're in charge of or, or assisting with the raising of the children. You're watching the kids while the able body members of the family can go out and provide resources for the family. And you're, there isn't any daycare and the whole family unit is together. This is the way that people have lived always until World War II, until the Great Depression. You know, when you look at the social engineering that was involved that moved people out of something that they've always done into what the baby boomers had, which was single family dwelling homes and everyone living independent and, and, and husbands and wives having to both go out into the workforce. It's astonishing how quickly they were to get us, to trick us against our nature to do this. So what happened in World War II? Well, this was really the first time in America in our culture where women left the house and were encouraged to go out into work. It was for the war effort, right? Now they got a taste of that. And now we have you know, the voting changes and, and the, uh, the female suffrage, et cetera, et cetera. Hold on one second. Sorry about that. The power guys, uh, lineman came over and had a question. He's got to pull off my job and go do, uh, take care of a power outage and they're going to come back. So anyway, I'll, I'll sum it up with this. So, so now the guys come back from home, right? And what's available what, in housing? It is single family dwellings. These are houses designed for only one family, not mother-in-laws, not extended family, just single families, right? And you can see, and now there's also um, the, not the welfare, but the uh, social security system. So now old people have got uh, um, a check from the government. You know, it's not going to be a great life, but they can exist at the time. You know, they can get by if they're frugal. And then you have, um, what else is there? Uh, and then you have retirement homes. So no longer is the family taking care of its own as they age and keeping them in the home, but they put them out into retirement communities. And you, and you have a complete change in the way that people have grown up and have been raised in the family structure forever. So when we look at the housing market and we look at what thing, we see that all of this experiment, this social experiment in capitalism, whatever you want to call it, 
is now failing, we're going to be getting back to the way things were. So I, as a man and as a husband and a father, I really see a big part of my responsibility is to, is to provide for my children the best I can, even beyond the grave. And that means in the future is we're, you're going to probably have to look at families living together multiple families living together and sharing the costs just because it's going to be necessary. You're not going to be able to buy your own tractor. You're not going to be able to be like the boomers and have a one-off of everything, just a, a little mini island, little millions of little islands in the stream independent of one another. No, we're going to need to come together and it's this inflation or house prices, whatever you want to call it, is going to force it. So I don't know that it's necessarily a bad thing. I think that uh, the idea of having your family around in a situation where I think, you know, I don't, I don't want, you know, be living with everyone in one home, obviously, but if you can create an environment where you can get together with families, friends, and buy properties together and, and really start sharing resources, it's only going to, that's the only option you have because you're not going to be able to maintain the lifestyle that we've been used to. You're either going to have to try and run yourself up to debt where it comes to a head and you're out on the street and no one's going to take care of you. This world is cruel. So now is the time to start making a plan. Mrs. W and I kind of saw this and when we were making our plans in the future, you know, we were moving to this direction. Acquire properties. Acquire, get yourself in a position where you can have, uh, put, put up buildings or you can, you know, you can have something for your family to fall back on, a fallback position and, and build yourself a community. So it's going to be tough, but it's, it's a new world. So it, I guess what will really help, what's helped me get rid of the frustration of, of living in a, de a decaying or declining, declining society where it's easy to get melancholy and depressed of it's not as good as it used to be, is to see that what the boomers had, what was created for them or what they created was not sustainable and actually quite terrible and is completely responsible for the, for the mess that we're in today. It's completely responsible. So embrace the change. Know that God, this is God's plan, that he saw the fallacy of being so independent and being so secular and is going to force us uh, to, to love and depend on one another, one another because we out of necessity. And then, you know, once you get involved like that, love and friendship and relationships will grow from that and strong bonds. And I think that the country is doomed as a whole, but there are small pockets uh, that will not only survive, but I think that they'll thrive. Uh, and bringing the coming of God. May God bless you and your families. Please keep us in your prayers, and we'll see you all on the next video.